Hi everybody and welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're looking at octos or alternate air sources. If you were taught, like me, then you were taught to keep your octo in a triangle from your chin to the bottom of your rib cage, that kind of triangle there, but that kind of opens things up. That's kind of vague. That's a decent sized triangle, depending on your body size, because not all divers keep their octo on their right hand hip. So we always dive with two second stages for redundancy. If something fails on your buddy's set, then you can both breathe from the same cylinder at the same time. But as with anything, there's more than one way to store an octo. So let's dive a little deeper. Most divers are taught to have a yellow octo on a longer hose, root it down behind their right hand shoulder, underneath their arm, and then attach to their BCD in front of their right hand side around here. It can be kept on the left hand side, that's why there's the triangle, but on the left that's pretty rare and there's no great reason to keep it there to be honest. We usually tend to keep all hoses to do with breathing air to the right hand side, the left hand side is more for controlling buoyancy, so hoses for your air come out the right side of your regulator, everything else comes out the left. There are plenty of clips and ways to attach your octo to your BCD. They're usually elastic loops that kind of hoop over the mouthpiece or the affectionately named scumble, which is basically like a soft bell that kind of holds onto the mouthpiece. But for each of them, if you just give the octo a tug, it'll come free and then you can use it. A lot of BCDs now have a special pocket for octos. Divers were folding the octo hose in half and then popping that hose through the D-ring. Um, the new BCDs have a pocket that kind of does the same thing without having to sacrifice a D-ring. The very tip of the triangle is just underneath your chin. If you attach a bungee loop to your alternate, it sits just underneath your chin and you can switch to it very quickly. A necklace alternate is there for you, not your buddy. It's not a quick release location and a lot of the bungees are actually fixed onto the second stage. A second stage necklace is for a primary donate setup where if my buddy is in trouble, I take the second stage that I am breathing from and then I hand that to them. I know for a fact that the one that I've been breathing from is working because I've just been breathing from it, and then I can swap to the alternate around my neck. I have much more time to fix it if there's an issue because I've just taken a breath from the good one, passed that over, so I've got plenty of time to switch to that one. If that's not working, then I can always switch back to the one that we both definitely know is working. The second stage on the necklace is typically on a slightly shorter hose than usual, and that just goes over your right hand shoulder. Too much slack in that hose is just gonna get in the way. Too much hose over your right hand shoulder. The necklace goes on first when you're getting kitted up. The primary that you breathe from is typically on a much longer hose, about two meters long. That roots down behind your shoulder, hooks underneath something on your waist belt, like a knife or something, and then it comes up across your body, behind your neck, and then it goes into your mouth. A simpler design that you can find from some manufacturers is combining your Octo and your BCD inflator into one single device. You can basically breathe from your inflator in a similar way to the necklace. You donate your primary to your buddy when they need it, and then you switch to the inflator to breathe from. It's a good way to reduce the number of hoses because you're basically combining your BCD inflator hose and your Octo hose into one single hose, so you're saving some weight as well. If you want plenty of redundancy, a bailout tank with a completely separate regulator mounted on your side or a pony tank behind you with its own regulator is definitely another way to go. A completely separate tank means that you can even switch to it if you need to. If there's something wrong with your primary regulator, you don't even have to switch to a different second stage. You can switch to a completely different regulator altogether. If you are using the bailout, the second stage will often be taken, looped behind your neck, and then it comes down on your right hand side, but just in kind of storage mode when the second stage is on that, uh, on that stage cylinder, the second stage is kind of tucked in underneath the first stage, held in place with the mouthpiece underneath the hose, and then the hose is you know, basically held against the tank with bungees wrapped around the tank. 
benefits of the traditional setup are that you can basically go diving straight out of the box and most divers are taught this method. So it's the closest thing to a universal setup. It won't confuse anybody. The Octo is on a fairly or a relatively short hose though, so you do have to get quite close to your buddy and stay close to your buddy, so it is better suited for open blue waters. It also has the risk of donating a second stage that is faulty to a diver. Um, that is already kind of running on borrowed time because they haven't had air for a while. Your Octo might have worked perfectly fine when you started the dive, but it could be full of sand or silt because you brushed along the bottom or, or something or anything. You never know. That's why I like primary donates because I know that this one is working properly and they're going to get a good breeze from it to at least get them back on level for playing fields. If you're bending hoses as well uh, and popping them through D-rings, one, you're losing a D-ring. Not a huge fan of that. Uh, you can't use that for anything else if you've got an octo hose popped through it. And the hose itself is going to wear out just by pinching it again and again in the same place, which isn't good for the hose. The necklace isn't taught as standard in most places. So if you are diving with someone new, they might not understand. They'll try and yank that second stage, which won't reach them because one, it's on a short hose and two, the necklace probably won't give. It's also not a standard setup. So you're gonna need to invest in some new hoses and swap them over. You can't just buy a regulator, assemble it. You actually have to swap some of the hoses in most cases. But practically, it's one of the best setups. You have a long hose to donate, uh, which gives you both plenty of space to sort yourselves out, even swim single file through a restriction if you need to. And if I'm donating a second stage to someone who's desperate for air, I want to don donate one that I know is working. The inflator alternate is clever. Um, not everybody gets on with it. Um, it it's, it's, kind of, it's great for reducing weight and there's a number of hoses and kind of streamlining your regulator, reducing the number of failure points and whatnot, but you need a special inflator hose that can deliver the required gas for someone to breathe from. That usually comes with that inflator when you buy it, but of course you have to fit it to your regulator. It also means that if you do ever need to use it, you need to control your BCD as you're ascending breathing from it so it's right there next to your mouth and you have to control your buoyancy a bit like a flute. It'll do the job, uh, it's just a little bit weird. It, you do need to practice with it first. <clears throat> you also have to get a compatible inflator or BCD that can accept that new inflator. Not all corrugated hoses are the same caliber uh, and they're a little bit bulkier than just a standard inflator. A bailout or a pony is great, uh, but again, a lot of extra gear. You, you're buying a new tank as well, a second regulator, so it's a lot of extra stuff for you. They are fantastic for redundancy because it is a completely separate system to switch to, but you do need to be able to mount it somewhere or somehow. And again, it's not widely taught from the start. Most recreational BCDs as well, they're not really made to support side-mounted tanks. It's not really what they're designed for. They don't have D-rings in the right places, but bailout tanks are great. You can literally unclip them and give them to another diver if you really need to donate it. So there are a few different places uh, and methods of storing your alternate air source. Typically, yeah, it's always in that triangle. You all know that I dive a necklace setup, but what setup do you prefer? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.